So it's my great pleasure to invite to the podium Chair of the Planning Committee, Story Landers, who introduced the program, our keynote speaker. Uh, and uh, Story, as you know, is scientist emeritus at National Institute of Neurological Disease and Stroke. She's a member of the NAM Council, so please help me to welcome Story. So um, I'm delighted to be here and to have been able to chair this program. On behalf of the Program Planning Committee, I'd like to welcome you to this program, Cancers, Cancers with an S, Can We Beat the Odds? You've already heard the list of the Program Committee meeting um, members, and their bio sketches or a short summary of their affiliations are present in your program. I particularly want to thank Liz Finkelman, um, who is the NIM staff member who helped us with this, because without her help and guidance, I think we might still be planning. So as far as I can figure out, this is the first time that the scientific program has focused on the topic of cancer. And I actually find that surprising. <laughs> Even as a neuroscientist, I find that surprising because cancer represents a significant health burden. And you'll hear some of the statistics um, in the talks you're going to listen to. But just one of them, two out of five Americans will, have, will be diagnosed with cancer. And I'm sure every one of us, with about a few minutes of reflection, could come up with a list of family members fa and friends and colleagues who've been diagnosed and may have died. My mother was diagnosed with colon cancer, survived that, and then died of lung cancer. My husband's mother died of renal cell carcinoma, and his sister this last year died of glioblastoma, a particularly nasty cancer. My husband <laughs> was diagnosed with prostate and a kidney mass, both caught very early, so there were surgical cures. My husband, my... Um, Two graduate students of mine, who were in the full bloom of their faculty careers, died of lung cancer and breast cancer. And professional colleagues I can think of easily, pancreatic cancer, glioblastoma, breast cancer. And I stopped there because it was a very depressing list. The burden has been recognized recently, a long time ago by Nixon's Warren concert, Cancer, but more re recently by the Cancer Moonshot and extra funds in the 21st Century Cures Act. So given the burden, it's surprising the program hasn't focused on this before. But secondly, there have been amazing advances in our understanding of cancer risk factors, including the contribution of genetics, um, the biology of cancer cells and their tissue environment, and the ever-increasing number of new therapeutic approaches. Now, this topic was chosen over a year ago, um, and I think in, in some ways we can recognize that was a prescient choice on the part of the NIM Council, because this year's Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine was awarded to Dr. James Allison, professor of UT MD Anderson Cancer Center, and Dr. Susuku Honjo, a professor at Kyoto, Kyoto University, for their independent discovery of the inherent ability of immune cells, of the immune system, to attack tumor cells when the breaks on immune regulation are released. And we'll hear more about that in the keynote speak, speech. So the most significant challenge the program committee faced was not finding enough material to discuss or the public health relevance or um, the public policy relevance, was really which particular areas to explore. In fact, if you think about the American Cancer Society meeting, it goes on for days with multiple um, sessions going on at the same time. So we picked um, a keynote speaker, Lori Glimsher, whom I'll introduce in a minute, to talk about immunotherapy. And then we focused on three sessions, areas of sessions, the first is prevention, and we chose here to skip over tobacco, although two of the people on the list died of lung cancer, and I didn't even count up their pack days. But instead, to discuss obesity, cancer genomics, and HP vaccination. The second session will examine challenges to therapeutics. 
We have wonderful therapeutic strategies, but cancer cells are very clever and devious, and the tumor heterogeneity and the development of resistance pose real challenges to the therapies. And finally, in the third session, we've coupled uh, two presentations on the state of art emerging um, approaches to prevention and treatment, and we coupled that with a really pressing policy issue of the cost of treatments. How do we extend or save the lives of patients and reward innovation in treatment without actually bankrupting our health system? So I want to say a few words about those sessions. It's going to be, um, the people will come up, there'll be a moderator. The speakers will sit in these chairs, these black chairs, and they will each present a very short talk. Then there will be a discussion amongst the panel members with questions from the moderator. And then at the end of this, there will be an um, opportunity for members of the audience to ask questions. And we ask that you not applaud at the end of the short talks, but that you wait until the session's over. And then because of the notion of getting up is good for you, um, when you applaud at the end of the session, if you could stand. <laughs> um, so we hope <laughs> that you will find this program as interesting and exciting as the program committee found planning it. So I'd like now to introduce the keynote speaker, Lori Glimsher. She's the president and CEO of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, principal investigator and director of the Dana-Farber Harvard Cancer Center, and the Richard and Susan Smith Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. Previously, she was the Stephen and Suzanne Weiss Dean and Professor of Medicine at Weill Cornell Medical School and Provost for Medical Affairs of Cornell University. From 1991 to 2012, she served as the Irene Heinz Given Professor of Immunology at the Harvard School of Public Health and Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, serving as a senior physician and rheumatologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital. She is a distinguished immunologist, widely renowned for her work in one of the most promising areas of cancer research, an elected member of the National Academy of Sciences, National Academy of Medicine, a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, former president of the American Association of Immunologists, and a member of the Cancer Research Institute, pre Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy. Thank you very much. Welcome. <laughs> 